With the help of Hashem, we are learning Yuma Daf Nun Gimel. We're going to be learning more about the Mala Ashen herb that is put into the Ketoides. We're going to have the discussion about one of the insights into the cause of the tragic death of two of Aaron's elder sons, which was by Yom Hashmini Lemeluyim. We're going to have the source that when the Kain Gadol exits the Kodesh Kachim, he has to exit the way he entered. In other words, he walks out backwards. And that's going to lead us to other instances where, we not, where we're not allowed to turn our back towards, including when a Talmud leaves a Rebbe, that halachically, the Lashon and the Gemara is, you have to go to the sides, Mitzadadin, beyond the letter of the law, Mamish, we have to walk backwards, which is going to lead us into the whole discussion of how when we finish Shemona Esrei, we have to take three steps backwards with other Pratim about how we conclude the Shemona Esrei with bowing to the right and bowing to the left, etc. We're going to have, the Gemara is going to share with us the Tefillah Ketzara that the Kohen Gadol says, Bebeis HaChitzayin, as we have in the Mishnah Daf Nun Beis, Ahmed Beis, what is the Tefillah Ketzara, which is going to lead us into a fascinating story to Rabbi Hanina Ben Doisa. And then we're going to have on Daf Nun Gimel Ahmed Beis, another Mishnah, the next Mishnah. It's going to be very interesting that even though we already explained the Mishnah Daf Nun Beis Ahmed Beis, is speaking about Bizman Bayesheni, because it was speaking about the Kohen Gadol's walking in between the both curtains, and the Mishnah that said that he placed the Machto uh, Bein Habadim. Ah, we said in Bayesheni we did not have the Aram Kodesh. It means in the place that used to be Bein Habadim. It's going to be a little bit challenging because the Mishnah that we will learn today on Dafnud Gimel Amid Beis will explicitly begin that when the Aran was taken away, then the Machta was placed on what we will call now the Evan Hashasiyah, the foundation stone. These are the words of the Mishnah. We're going to have a lot about the Evan Hashasiyah on Dafnud Dalid on the next Daf. And actually, the Gemara is going to point out the contrast between the words that we learned yesterday in the Braisa Mishnah, Nignas Ha'arin. Versus the words we're going to have in the Mishnah today and Nun Gimel Amen Beis Mishnah Nital Ha'aden, big difference. Nital means it was taken, and guys, this is going to take us back to Shkolim, where there we take out a machlokes tanoim, whether the Aron Kodesh was concealed, was hidden someplace in Harabayis under the place of the Beis Hamikdash, or certainly the entrance to the pathway to the secretive pathway is from some place in the temple complex. Now we learn details in Shkolim. It was in the uh, Beis Ho'etzim, in the Lishkas Beis Ho'etzim, versus other Tanoim that opine that the Aron HaKodesh was taka taken into Bavl. And that's going to correlate better with the words in the Mishnah, Daf Nun Gimel in Yuma, Mishanit Al Ha'aren. We're going to be learning about the next step that happened after the offering of the Ketoides. The Kohen Gadol left, that we already finished learning on Daf Nun Beis, Amad Beis, but now he's going to bring back in the Dam of the Par. We're going to learn details in the Mishnah about how and where was the dam of the par sprinkled in the Kodesh Kachim? And this is all journeying through the Avoida. And after we learn the Avoida of the par, we're going to learn in the next daf a similar Avoida that happened with the dam of the soil. Just for the sake of clarity, the soil is not slaughtered yet. In other words, where we're at is, is that the par was, after both Viduyim, the par was the Shkita Sapar. The dam was given to someone, to a Koyen that was standing on the Roivad Revi'i. The Mishnah says of the Heichel, beyond the Heichel, in the Ulam, as we learned, and he was being Memaras Bedam. We are up to now, everything that he's doing with the Ketoiris, including already exiting the Kodesh Kachim, that's where we're at in the Seyed and Hadvarim. And Hebron, let's go to the Afnun Gimel Amidalaf. We are 19 lines from the top of the Amid, right, nearing towards already the end of the narrow lines, in middle, in middle of the line, Omar Mar, Omar Mar that we learned before, now the Braise was very challenging, because just quickly reviewing, we have the Tzedukim, that they erroneously interpreted the Pasuk as to mean that they needed to enter the Kodesh Kachim already in a cloud. And we know that that's not the case. And the reason why we know it's not the case is because it says that the Nasan Esakatoidis Al Hoesh Lifne Hashem, that we place the Katoidis when we are standing, Lifne Hashem means in Kaidish Kachem. So the Braisa says, I watch the Pshat Kiba Onon Eroa Ala Kapoidis. So the Gemara, the Braisa tells us, ah, from here you have a source that you have to put Mala Oshan in the Katoidis to make sure that there is this unique 
cloud created. It's created while you are in the Kodesh Kachim, but that's the source of the Mala Ashen. And then very difficultly, the Braisa went on to say, Umi nayin shenoisin about Mala Ashen. Mama, right after we brought the source from Mala Ashen, the Braisa says, and how do you know you have Mala Ashen? And the Braisa then brought another Pasuk. And the other Pasuk is where it says, Vechisa anan hakatoires es hakatoires. So that's where we're leaving off. We have to explain the flow of the Braisa. So Omar Mar, the master, the Tana taught us, Umi nayin shenoisin about Mala Ashen. And the Braisa answers, Tamud Laimir Vechisa asks the Gemara, how do you understand that? The Braisa just used the Pasek Kiba Onon Eiroa Ala Kapoiris as the source that we have to put this herb, Mala Ashen, in the Katoiris. So, Kra, Likra? What? You have to have a source for a Pasek from another Pasek? No, the source is the Pasek. So, Amar Rabbi Yosef Hachika Amar. Ah. We have, to, we have to add a nuance here in the Braisa. Baruch Atu Adino, Yilhidim Alachidim, Shakon Limud Vari. The Malo Ashen, like all herbs, or many herbs, have two parts to them, or we can classify them into two parts. You have the leaf of the herb, and then you have the root. So says Ravi Yosef, that had we only, with only the first Pasik, Kiba Onon, Eira, Alakapoides, Melamed, Shonoisen, Bo Malo Ashen, I would have thought that we only are allowed to put the superior, the better part of the Mala Ashen. And according now to this first understanding, that would be the leaf. You have to use the best, which is the leaf. How do you know that you can also use the root? So that's why we have a second Pasuk V'chisa. So Amalei Abaya, well, I accept your, your premise that to Psukim is to add even, so to say, the inferior part, but you have Yosef, you have it wrong, 180 degrees wrong. Tanya, we have an Abraisa clearly that the root is superior. So if we only would have had one Pasik, we would have we would have applied it to the root. Okay. The Tanya, as we learned, that Nasan ba ikin malo ashan, that if you put the root in, dafka the root, that's the best part of this herb, then hoya misamir va oila kamakel, then the smoke would rise, right, like, like the shaft of a palm, straight up, acha magelosh mekhoira, until it would reach the ceiling. And as we explained, it wasn't only that it hit the ceiling, but what happened later was, kivan shigelosh mekhoira, the first white line, it didn't want to go down. So instead of going down, it went horizontally, it traveled under the ceiling, and it went now, to the, all of the uh, horizontal parts. Went north-south, east-west, all on the roof. And it slowly would descend, and it wouldn't descend in the whole room, it would only descend down the walls. Almost as, in other words, there was like an empty space within the Ashan. We have that right in the Radash, he says that God made like a shvil to Moshe Rabbeinu to enter. Was something similar happened because of the Mala Ashan. And enough, this was so important, as we learned in the Mishnah, that the Kohen Gadol would stay in the Kodesh Kachim until the bias was filled with the smoke. So, Bekitza Deer, the Braisa, seems to be emphasizing that the superior part of the Mala Ashan is Dafka when you use the root. Abai accepts Rabbi Yosef's premise. The Braisa needs to psukim to add even the inferior, but he flips it. Second white line. If I only would have had the Pasuk Kiba on an Eiroa, Ala Kapoiris, Alei Malo Oshin Minayin, how do you know that you also could use the Alei, the leaf, even though its effect won't be as good as? So Talmud Loimer, that's why the Braisa brought Vechisa. Rab Sheishis, Omar, another explanation why the Braisa needs to find two psukim that elude both to the Ma'alei Ashen herb. Had we only had one Pasuk, I would have thought that when did we need the Ma'alei Ashen only when we were in the desert. However, when we moved on to Shiloi and base Eilamim, God's eternal home. How do you know that there also we need the Ma'alei Ashen? That's why we need the second Pasuk. Alright, asks the Gemara, hi. Why are you telling me that I need to have a special Pasuk for the future? When it says, also an Achri Mois, that Vechein Yasel Oil Moyet Hashoichin Itom, that Pasuk means that as we do in the desert, similarly should always be done in all of the future Oil Moyets. 
This Pasuk already gives us the general rule that all of the type of Aveda, as it is prescribed in Achrei Mois, is done forever. So we don't need to have another Pasuk to tell you that Mala Oshin has to be done in Shiloi and in Beis Oilamim. Elo Hachika Omar says that Apsheish is Elo, Einle Yelo, Kippurim, that you have to have the Mala Oshin. And we're speaking about, just to make something clear, Chevra, that even on Yom Kippur, aside of all this extra Musafin, you also have the Timidim. We had this before. They did the Karman Tamid, the Kayan Gadol offered the Ketairis. The Shari Yemai Sashana also means the normal, the daily, including Yom Kippur's. The half a month in the morning, the half a month in the afternoon. There, you didn't have to have this type of Mala Oshan to create this effect of him standing in the room that was Vabayas Mismali. You didn't have any of that. You didn't need that. How do you know that always you needed the Mala Oshan? That's why you have the Vechisa Gavaldik. Now, Ravashi Omar, Chad le Mitzvah, Chad le Akev. Ah. As we have a rule that, well, that only when Shana Bahakos of La'akev, no, Pashit, you need to have two psukim. Had you only had one Pasuk, I would have thought it's a mitzvah to put in the Mala Oshan. All right. And Toysvis, all these, like, quickly, quickly in the, in the middle of the second Toysvis. Temeli Frek Toysvis, if the whole reason why God repeated something is because of Shana Bahakos, we learned there are other words that Hashem uses that have the same effect of it makes it li'ikuva by kach one is the word chuka. Temeli ma yitzrech l'kara la'akev ha'chuka ksiv beparsha. So he, he, Taisu says beautiful that the word chuka is taka only written regarding Yom Kippur. Avul k'toyres the chalashana you have to have another pasuk for la'akev, which is really great. In other words, Rab Ashi is being is is a continuation of Rab Sheshes, even though even though. Oh, he gives like a new approach, but the, the la'akev is for the b'chol yom ha'isashana. That's great. Rav Omar, another approach, chad lo'oynish v'chad la'zoro. Now we can take a step back, and this is a rule, not only concerning kachim. Whenever there is a punishment to be received for violating any one of God's rules, the system is God will mention that at least twice, meaning that there's going to be one pasuk in which God says, thou shall not, whether it's an explicit thou shall not, whether it's an implicit, all right? And then there's going to be another pasuk with the punishment. There is never one punishment. Don't do it with the punishment. There is a thou shall not do, and then there is a punishment. Gewaldik. And same thing over here, as we mentioned above, that there's a chi of Misa, not only for entering the Kodesh Kachim with, uh, with one of the 11 ingredients missing. Not only that, there's a chi of Misa for every day's off, uh, offerings of the Kodesh if, Nicole, if, if, there's a miss, if we're missing one. But how about the Mala Oshan? That even if you have all the 11 ingredients, but you're missing the Mala Oshan, you need to have, and that you're going to be chai of Misa, you need to have two psukim chad lo'inish v'chad la'azora. And I'm quickly going to read inside the Rashi, somewhere in the middle of the Amid. Chad lo'inish v'chad la'azora. Va'al yavoi ki ba'onon, that's the azora. V'chisa anan v'loyomus ze'oinish. And the Rashi says, v'ilu loyomus, ay, it says loyomus, the al yavoi. It says al yomus before. So Rashi says, no, that al yomus is speaking about entering there without coming in with anything. Be it a konis. But if you're entering with the Ketoitis and with all of the Yudal of Samanim, you're only missing the Mala Oshan, oh, for that you have to have the, the double, the two psukim. Says the Gemara that this is going to be substantiated with the Braisa. Tanya, Rabbi Eliezer Oimer, Vilayamus goes to the Oynish. Ki Be'anon is a Roy, that's the Azara, that's Kavaldik. Okay, so now we're going to go and Le'ingen to the following. It's very interesting that even though the Torah writes explicitly in the beginning of Parsha Shmini, when the Torah records the death of Nadav and Avil, the two older sons of Aaron HaKoyen, the Torah writes, Befeirish, that what that Vayakrivu Lefnei Hashem Eish Zara, right, with the special trap, Asher Loi Tziva Oisam, or maybe Asher Loi Tziva Hashem Oisam, whatever the Loshan HaKosav is. The Torah writes that, that they entered with a foreign fire. Nevertheless, Chazal many times are looking for reasons for their passing. It says because they brought an Eish Zara. 
that, that will never be enough. I'll explain that in a moment. So here we are saying, ah, maybe now we discovered another reason why they passed away. Well, it's now that we established that coming in with Tikatoidus, but that does not have the Malo Ashan for that Yechayev Misam. So Yochel says the Braisa, you, Shneim, Amurim, Koidem, Misas, Adam, that if both of these Psukim, even though they are recorded in Achrimois, but based on the rule, even according to those that are very uh, careful when to apply it, that ain mugda We had this in Psachim, maybe we had it even after Psachim until here. There are times that you have to say that the Torah is not written in a chronological order. Maybe God told Moshe these both Psukim before Mesa Shneba Aden, and that will explain why they passed away. That's the Pshat. All right. And like Rashi says, I'm reading in Rashi, and therefore Venemar Sheba Oven Malo Oshon Shele Nitnu, that's why they passed away. So the Torah says, nah, Tamodoy no. So therefore it says, Achri Moshe Shneba Ine Aden. That uh, no, this commandment was given after they passed away. Well, you Now, by the way, both of these psukim are all written in the portion of Achrimois. And the raya that it was not said before, raya is because it says Achrimois So it's not just that the Torah is not written in chronological order, but if you have a whole portion beginning. After their passing, so everything in it is after the passing, it's also not true. One of these two were Taka said before. One of the two, not both. Now, one of the two is the warning. One of the two means that since there wasn't a second Chayev Misa, they did not pass away because they didn't have the Malo Ashen. But Taka one was written before. So Talmud Loimer says the Braisa that the one of the two Psukim, that Ki Be'onon Eira Ala Kapoiris, which is the Pasuk that the Tzedukim misinterpreted. The one that we know means God is warning us, don't enter in the Kodesh Kachim with the Ketreides without the Malo Ashen because you will need to have a cloud when you put it in the Kodesh Kachim. This Kiba Anan Eira must have been said prior. How do you know it was said prior to Mr. Shnei Ba'aron? The Gemara will explain in a moment. Okay. So HaKeit said, the one Pasuk, Hazara was taka given to the Yidin, Including to the Kaihanim, to all of us, Kaidamisa, which is why their death was not because of it. The other Pasik, the Chisa Anan Haketoiris Es Hakapoiris, that was Taka said in its right place, the Oinish Achar Misa. Now, before we go on, we have to understand what's the proof that Kiba Onan Eiroe was said prior to. It's so not logical. Not only is it written in the portion of Achrimois, but, but it's, the parsha is called after their passing. It's a much bigger stretch. Just we have to. Why do we have to say it was said before? My Talmud, Amar Rav, Apashit, Amar Kra, Kiba Onan, Kiba Onan, God is saying that I will appear in the cloud. That verse was said prior to Hashem ever having appeared in the Oyel Moyed. Now, remember, already at the end of Parsa Tzav, after the Torah gives many more pratim in the Karbonos, Behem Shukhtova Yikra. Then we go through the uh, Shiva Simei HaBoloyim. Then Vahiba Yerim HaShmini. You were in the beginning of the Parsha. And then uh, after Adam took over, the Shechina still did not appear, however that looked like. And then you had the final Tfila Adam felt that God did not forgive him. And then the Pasuk says, God appeared. Kiba Onan Eiron means God says, I will appear. That means he said this prior to the first appearance. You know where the Torah records the Misa Shnei Bnei Aaron after God appeared? Mamash right afterwards. It says, Vayera Kavayit Hashem, the first time. And Mamash, look inside the Chumash and Shemini. And right afterwards it says that Shnei Bnei Aaron, then they, they, they brought a Eish Zara. So this Pasuk must have been said, Vadayin Leinira. So Taka one was said before and only one afterwards. So now the Ella here again, this, we have this many times in Chazal. My Tama Iyanush, why were they punished? Somehow the Eish Zara is not Bechlal, it looks like it's being ignored. And uh, let me just share, we have, we have sometimes it says that they were punished because they entered the Kodesh Kachim. Sometimes it says because they brought something unauthorized, the Eish Zara. One, sometimes they have that in the Chazal Dabshat. Sometimes it says because they took the fire from an improper source. Sometimes it says because they entered intoxicated. Sometimes it says because they entered Mechusr Begadim. Whether they were not wearing any of the big day kahuna or whether they were not wearing all of the big day kahuna. Sometimes it says because they didn't wash their hands by the kir. So the vart is, is that Eish Zara includes all of them. 
Age Zara is such a reality until today. Many people, not many people, all people, we want to get close to God. The question is, what medium are we allowed to use to get close to God? And if we are using the path that we are on, will make us feel fire. We'll feel a connection. We'll feel Avas Hashem and Yiras Hashem. But if that path is not Kash and Siva Hashem as Moshe, that is exactly the meaning of an Eish Zara. And that explains all of the interpretations. Like why would they enter unauthorized? Because they wanted to get close. The concept is beautiful. But if God did not allow you to get close in this way at this time, you're not allowed to do it. And that explains ev everything. So here the Gemara is going to say, Kedetanya Rabbi Yezer Oimer, Leimesu B'nei Aaron Elo, <clears throat> Ella, he's, he's excluding <clears throat> the real machlaikis. Ella al shohoiru alocha bifnei Moshe Rabban. They paskind, even though they should have, they must have, they needed to defer to Moshe Rabbeinu. <clears throat> we'll, we'll, we'll speak about that in a moment. But first, what happened? My Dorosh, so Fakert, since we just mentioned, as we just mentioned, that the presence of God appeared for the first time. One of the many manifestations of the Shekhinah was the miraculous fire that we keep on speaking about that came in the form of a lion that consumed the Karbanos. And the moment they witnessed that, one might have thought, Yutaka did not need to bring any fuel. So they wanted to make it clear that even though the fire of God sufficed to consume no matter how many Karbanos you're going to bring, but they said the right din. Nevertheless, God wants for us to bring our own fire, our own fuel. Minimally, the Shnei giz, Gizrei or Gizrei ate him in the morning and in the afternoon. It says, So they said, and they said correct, but it wasn't for them to say. Nevertheless, I want you to know that many big Rabbanim, when someone asks them a Shailah, the way they paskin is by opening up a Shulchan Aruch. That's obviously if the one who's asking is able to read the Shulchan Aruch, and they would show them the halach inside. All based on this concept, don't be moira halacha bifnei rabbi. And by the way, that's a great way of paskining. If not, at least right away giving a mara mokim. Because taka, today we're not paskining. Everything was paskined already. Our rov is the Rama, followed by the Alter Rebbe. That's our rov. And Bifnei Rabbi means the Sfarim are here. Take, take the Sefer out and show the Psak Din. It's not your Psak Din. But that, that this concept of Paskening and Halacha also, you want to get close to God, you want to tell everyone the right thing to do. This is not for you to tell. If Moshe Rabbeinu was present, he should have been the one, he should have been the one who should have shared this Halacha and not them. Okay, Viter. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes. A couple lines ago, it says, I don't I push it don't see. It's the last word. You Ah got it. Okay. The last the last letter Men is Lashon HaKodesh, Nun is in Aramish. I'm not answering your question, like why do we change from Hebrew to, to Aramish, but that's the way it is. And that, that's what, that was my understanding, but like it seems like the rest of what's being said in both cases is Lashon HaKodesh, no? Yafo Yu Shnehem, Yafo Yu... I think, I think in the, in the Talmudic Aramaic, or not okay, to make it, the, the Talmudic Aramaic is not to Unkelis. It's like Yiddish. Uh -huh. Now, I am not saying that it's grammatically imprecise. There's got to be a reason. I'm going on a real stretch. You have to have a source. Maybe there's a mistake. Maybe. If there's a lack of consistency in the same Braiso. But there's very often that you have a Nun and a Mem. Just know, Mem is Lashon HaKodesh, Nun is Aramish. Let's go right. Now, Yotso Ubaloi Derech Knisosoi. So that's why the, the Gemara is referring back to the Mishnah that when the Kohen Gadol would finish. When would he finish? Even though that on one hand he was rushing later. People should not become terrified that he passed away. But he needed to stay in the Kodesh Kachim, as the Mishnah says, until the room was filled with the Oshan. Then a smale kol habayis kuli Oshan, says the Mishnah. Now, when he left, he would leave the way he entered, which means he would push it walk backwards. 
So how do we know that we express our reverence to the presence of the Shechina by walking backwards? Where do we find this? The Pasuk over here is during the time that the Mishkan was built in Givoin. This is right before the Beis Hamikdash was built. The Aron HaKodesh wasn't there anymore. And Bakhlal, that's the rule. The reason why there is an Iser Bamas or a Heter Bamas that's contingent on if the Aron HaKodesh is in the Mishkan. Whenever the Aron HaKodesh was in the Mishkan, Mishkan Shiloi, there was an Iser, there was an Iser to build a Bama any place else. And we would call the Holy Temple the the Holy Temple, approaching the Mishkan. Whenever the Aron HaKodesh was not in the Mishkan, and it wasn't there, not a noiv, during, giving during those 57 years, just to know when you went to the Mishkan, it says you went to the Bama. Because if you don't have the Aron HaKodesh, then the second most important part of the Mishkan was the Bama. Bakhlal, that's the Machlekes, Rambam and Ramban. Here you go, the Mem and the Nun, but that's two different people. That the, the Rambam holds that the Iker of the Mishkan is the Karbana. The Ramban says the Iker is the... Uh, is the is the Aron Hakodesh? So it says Vayavoi Shloimai La Bama. That's just the way they spoke, but because it wasn't Givain, that wasn't Givain. And the next word, Pasha doesn't make sense. He went to the Bama, to the Mishkan, and given in Yerushalayim. No, no, no. It wasn't Givain. The word Yerushalayim doesn't fit. Vichima Ian given it's a Yerushalayim. Elo the word is Makish Yitziyosi me given Yerushalayim after he brought the carbon on the Bama in Givain, when he went out, he was physically facing, he was positioned, Begashmias, the same way he was positioned when he entered. Which is, where, where was he facing? He was going towards Givain, from Yerushalayim. Pan of Klape Bama. That's just the way you walk. You walk frontwards. When he finished giving his offering his karbanos, and now he left from giving, going back to Yerushalayim, up until a certain point, up until a certain point, Panov Klape Bama Kedarech Biyasi. He Begashmias did not turn around. He walked out completely backwards. Says the Brisa Vaiter. I'm sorry, says Rabbi Yenis and Vaiter, the Chain Kayhane and Bachlal, every day when they did their Avoida, and the Levian when they stood on their platforms, and the Israelim who had representatives that needed to stand, right, Bima'amadon, or all the Yidden that opted to stand and to witness the Avoida, that Kishahim left Tadim when we depart. They did not turn their faces around totally. And here I know that there's two levels of backwards. The, Mishnah, the, the, the statement of Chazal begins with the minimum. The minimum reverence is mitzadadin peneim v'holchin. Mitzadadin means you walk sideways. We're saying sideways because when you attack a walk completely facing the makim hakadosh, then b'chal you won't see what's going on behind you. You might get hurt, as we'll see in a moment. As Rava got hurt, when you're mitzadid, you're showing reverence. But you're also, you're keeping an eye on where you're going. And not only is this a chazal, but now a stories. Who was a Talmud of Rabbi Echanan. So whenever he was with Rabbi Echanan and either one of them was taking leave, which, whichever way it happened, Rabbi Lazar always stood facing Rabbi Yechanan. Kat have a miftan minei de Rabbi Yechanan whenever they were departing. So I guess. Kat have a by Rabbi Yechanan l'sagoye when it was Rabbi Yechanan that wished to go. Rabbi Lazar stayed in the in this place. Rabbi Yechanan went. So Rabbi Lazar was not walking, but he would stand up and he would bow down towards Rabbi Yechanan. Have a gochin koi Rabbi Lazar aduchte. He would stay in his place, but he would bow down. Until when until when he was unable to see his teacher Rabbi Yechanan. And Vachad Hava Boy Rabbi Lazar Lasagoya when Rabbi Lazar was the one taking leave, Rabbi Yechanan was staying in his place. So Hava Ka'azal La Achoire, he would go backwards. Ad Machasiminade Rabbi Yechanan, not only Daladamas, until he was unable to see him anymore. Now, it's not clear whether he was Mitzadeid. Whether he went completely backwards, but listen to the next story. Rava, the last line in the Amit, Kathave Mifter Minede Rabbi Yosef. Now, Rabbi Yosef was Rava's teacher at Hebron. Don't forget that Rabbi Yosef was blind. That means that Rabbi Yosef never even would have known if Rava would have at some point turned his back. 
Doesn't make a difference. He was Machabed, his teacher. Have a la he would walk mamish backwards. But here it's clear from the story he was not mitzadeid. He walked facing his teacher, so he was unable to see where he's going. Ad the menak von kare until his legs you would get bruised. Guys, do you remember? Did you remember that we have the same Rava, Shabbos, Daf, Peiches? Remember when he was learning, the Gemara says that he would sit on his hands and he was unaware of it and his hands began to bleed. Remember the Tzaduki that told him, I'm a Paziza, right? That, that, your, that your, your, your mouth is before your ears, Nasev and Ishma. I mean, Rava was the type of person that he was so engrossed in his learning. Maybe there are other stories about Rava. Even when he was bleeding Begashmias, he was unaware of it. He was not in this universe. Adam and Akvan Kare, to what point? Umitavis son, Iskufa, the Rabbi Yosef, Dama. And the threshold of Rabbi Yosef was dirtied with blood. Dafnun Gimelamid Beis. Now, Rabbi Yosef wasn't even aware of that level of reverence and kaveh that Rabbi gave to him. So Amru Leil Rabbi Yosef, the Chevra told Rabbi Yosef, the other Talmidim, that Rabbi, when he leaves, he mamish walks backwards. That means it's beyond mitzadet. He taka wouldn't see where he's going. He would get hurt. Your, your, your walls are bloodied. Hachi Oved Rabbi Zaytut Rabbi Amar Leil. So Rabbi Yosef gave him a bracha. And he said, Yehi Rabbi, may be God's will, the sorum reishach, that your head should be raised up, akula karacha, over the entire city. Which means, indeed, that halachic kirav. Yeah, there are exceptions, yal kigam, but that's the general rule, and that was dafke, because of the bitl that was expressed also by this behavior that Rava had, and that's bachlal, the yesoid of the whole chasidis, it's not about how smart you are, it doesn't hurt, but the yesoid, how yesoid is, is the type of Yira that a person has in Bittel, and that's also expressed with the level of Bittel that a Talmud has for, for the Rebbe. Omar Rebbe Alexander Amar Yishob and Levi, Behem to this conversation, and not even Mitzadeid, but Mamish to go 180 backwards. We do this every time we dab in Shemana Esrei, that Ham is Palel, and now we ended the Tfilom, Tzarech Sheyafsiya Sholosh Pesiyas Lachoyrev. You have to take three steps back. And only then, Varchar Kachit in Shalom, as will be described in a moment. Amalei, Rav Mordechai. Another detail, that Kivin Shepasa Shalosh Pesis Lachoyrev, that even after taking three steps backwards, and by the way, we Paskin, the Alter Rebbe speaks about this, that we should dafka start with the left leg, or the left foot, when you're going after Shmoyna Esrei, with your weaker foot. So you basically take a little left step, then you take one step with the right, and then you bring your left to be aligned with your right. So it's left, right, left, when you finish my Nesri, that when you finish taking these steps, don't right away jump back or right away walk away. Stand there, stand there, until when you have three shitas that are brought on Shulchan Aruch. The minimum amount of to be lemekam, to stand there, that is the time that it takes you to walk Daladamas, which is a couple of seconds, but there is a pause. Then you have two other opinions, especially when you're davening with a minion, or if you're davening with a the time that it would take when you're davening with a minion, either until the beginning of the repetition, or, and that's what's talking the minig of the Rebbe, to stand back until you are right prior to Kedusha. And by Shmona Esrei, is that it, like might if there's no Kedusha, in the middle of, I think the Rebbe used to walk back by Kadash to Skabel, by Friday night, the Rebbe would walk back, he would stay by Yechulu back, I think in the middle of the Baruch Atah Hashem, I don't remember, but the people, the people that are very good at knowing exactly the minig of the Rebbe, but there is a while that you step back. And if you don't, so he gives an interesting mashal, mashal of Talmud, and if the Rabbi, that im choyzer la'altet, just like, you know, it's, we're correlating, es Hashem alekecha, es la Rabbi, talmide chachamim, that the cover that we give to a Rebbe, the cover that we give to God, it's the same concept. That im choyzer la'altir, doimer lekelev shoshav al keyoi. If a, if a dog vomits, so I know we're going from the negative to the positive, but it's the same concept. When a dog vomits, so at first, he, he's getting rid of something that's unhealthy within him. But the, the meaning of the dog is many times he licks up his vomit. When you see that, then you understand he didn't vomit because he wanted to get rid of some unhealthy substance in him. Why would he lick it up? It, 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 it's Megali that what he did wasn't the way you thought it was, just to get rid of some unhealthy substance in his body. 
when a person takes three steps back from Shemana Esrei, it looks like he's giving reverence to God. It looks like a positive thing. If you right away stop doing that, especially we walk back, then it makes it into a chucha klula. It, it takes away the whole chashivus. Now, of course, at some point, you're going to have to walk back. And Bechlal, the way the al explains, listen, from God's perspective, Hashem is everywhere. And that's the real truth. So why are we Bechlal taking steps back and steps forward? The whole world is God's place. But, but when we are focusing on our das tachten, on our relationship with Hashem, you find me a yid that is the whole time conscious that he's in God's presence. These are big tzaddikim. Most of us don't have that consciousness. So we have to make our effort for us to experience the truth. And that's also expressed by the three steps. It's amoida, that the, you know, I'm thinking about other stuff. Halavai, somewhere God is in my mind, but to really understand that I'm standing in front of God's presence and I'm taking leave of God's presence, that is expressed when I take the three steps back. And hold on a second, wait, wait for a, wait for a moment. And Tanya Nami the second medium sized lines, I'm a spalel. And only then shalom. And the im loyasa kain. These are very heavy words. Is roi loy shaloi li Wow. In other words, the failure of a person, it, it, what does that show? It, it, it expresses the person's lack of awareness that he was standing in front of God. No, it's a big thing to take the three steps back and take a pause. And then furthermore, umishum shemaya amru. How often do we have from Shemaya, right? Shemaya Navitalian, that not only do you take three steps back, but only after you, you take the three steps back. Now we have more pratim. Shanois and shalom liyamin. Part of taking leave is you, you bow liyamin. We'll see soon what that means. I know yamin means right, but we'll clarify. And varchar kach lismoil. And shenemad, why to the yamin first? So he brings a source to prove that there is some sort of intrinsic um, superiority to the right. As it says, right? No, the fact that the fiery, that the Torah came from God's right, that's a raya, that there is some intrinsic mila to right, so take shalom first, liyamin. And now, you always have to explain why you have to have another pasik. It says in Tehillim, that now we have, as we learned in Brachas, a lot of demonic forces all over the place, especially right around us. To the left we have a thousand, and to the right we have ten thousand. So that's a raya by the fact that there are ten thousand shadim to one's right, from whom God protects us from if they are of a destructive nature. Why is there more to the right than to the left? I know we're speaking about something negative. That's because there's more potential greatness. There is a greater upside to the right than to the left. And that's the way it is. The more Kedusha, the more opposition. The more Kedusha, the more Tumah. The more Kedusha, the more Klippah, in potential. So the fact that we have 10,000 to the right, that's the second proof that there's some superiority to the right, explaining why we take Sholem first to the right. Why, asks the Gemara, do you need to have the second Pasuk? What was not enough with the first? So the Gemara explains that the Chitema Urchelimel Sehilo Meisav Biyamin, you know, it's the fact that God gave the Torah with his right, Kaviyachal. That's not because, that doesn't say that there is some sort of Be'etzatzatzmiyazdike, intrinsic superiority to the right. Could be that's the way it is. It, it's not that deep. That's why Talmud Tashima, the, no, the fact that we have many more, tenfold more shade to the right to the left, that's because there's something unique about the right towards which there is uh, the potential for a lot more negativity. Talmud Tashima, Yipa Metzichta Elef, Right is greater than left. Now, what shot you take Shalom to the right? So when you read it, you would think you take three steps back and then you bow down to your right. No. So Rava once saw Abaye, the Yav Shlom Eliyamina Beresha, Abaye after Shmona Esri bowed down towards Abaye's right. Amar Le, so Rava corrected him. And he tells Abaye, Mi Sovrat, Liyamin Didach, that's not what was meant. No, Lismoil Didach, I mean, you bow down to the left. Why? Because the have a yamin The whole concept of the three steps is to be more mindful that we enter the presence of God when we daven. And therefore, when we leave, we have to take a leave. You don't just walk out and you don't turn your back around and you take the three steps and you wait. So part of that is, is that your left is God's right. Right? If someone is facing, even by lahadl, by people, if I'm facing you, you're facing me, that's the way it works. My right is your left. 
Another detail. Amar Avchia Barei De Rafuna that Chazin Alohu to both are Abai and Rava that when they would take the three steps and they would only bow. Now we clarified first to our left and then to the right. After they took the three steps, they would continuously have their body in a bowed position while they are taking the three steps. That the pasaluhu shalish psiyos bekriya achas. Or they bow down. They take three steps back, beginning with the left foot. And let me just add something over here. Just the bottom line is that the Rebbe, most people, they do oisah shalom b'mraimov to the left, hu yasah shalom aleinu to the right, right, which is to God's right and left, v'alka yisrael v'imru amen to the center. The Rebbe used to bow only by the words oisah shalom b'mraimov. Oisa to the left, Shalom to the right, Bimramif to the center. Another important detail that the Medvara Mamurim, that right means left, that's only when we are davening Biyachidis. When a person is a Shliach Tzibur, then when you finish Shmona Esrei and when you finish, I mean, Kadosh Teskabal, when you take the three steps back, you talk about down to your right first. Because then it's as if you are standing with God, not in front of God, which is how we view it. When you're davening, be yechidus. Vaiter. Okay. And in this case, yechidus means even with, with the minion, but not with you. The silent shman esrei, with the minion, that is when you bow down to the left. The Rebbe would go oisa. The Rebbe actually had another, the Rebbe had another bow to the center. The Rebbe would go left, center, right, center. But when he would finish shman esrei, as the, as the shliach tzibur, he would go oisa, shalom, bim roimav. Okay, vaiter. They're referring back to the Mishnah. So whatever happened in the Kodesh Kachim, aside of him awaiting for their room to be filled with smoke, the Mishnah writes zero. That's a secret. But here, when he's Bebeis Achitzayin, Rashi wrote in the Mishnah, when he's already in the Hechel on the way out, he would pray a short prayer. And now, Frek the Gemara, my matzli. Okay, what's the Tefillah Kitzadam? So says the Gemara, Rava Barav Ado and Ravin Barav Ado. These are brothers. Tarvayu, both of them said in the name of Rav that Amri was Zakta Kain Gadol. He wrote some Lufanach Hashem Elokeinu. May it be your will. Hashem Elikeinu Shetehei Shanazu Geshuma Shechuna. Geshuma means rainy. Shechuna means hot. It should be rainy and hot. Frek the Gemara, that is what he prayed. Rainy is good. Hot? Shechuna Ma'al Yasi is hot advantageous. Who wants to live in Miami? Ella Ema. No. Im Shechuna. Even if it's destined Nebuch to be hot, at least let it be rainy because the rain. At least counters, counters the uh, challenge, the difficulty, the pleasantness, the unpleasantness that we have by living in Florida. That he added more tefillas. Number one, and uh, you see how a tefillah could sort of by Yidin. It's beautiful. We, we're daveners. The little tefillah is going to grow a beard. He added that lo of it that made the one who exercises rulership. We're speaking here about the reish galusa. We're speaking later uh, ultimately to the Rabbeim that, uh, that may it be God's will that the Jewish people should never not have a leader that is from the tribe of Yehuda, which is the ideal leader. And you know why? Going back to above, because the, the, the leaders from base Yehuda have already in their spiritual DNA a much greater level of bittel. which is the whole meaning of Yehuda. The word Yehuda means to be moida, to be bottle. And invited, we got to speak about Parnasa. May no yid ever need to get a sustenance one from the other. And and people who are traveling and they don't want to be inconvenienced by the rain. And they daven while they're traveling, God Almighty, please uh, hold on, I'm getting home 7 p.m. and let it rain only then. Don't listen to their prayers. It's amazing. Even though they're praying a selfish prayer, it's only good for them, but for the nation, rain is so important. You know what? They pray be'emes. And a tefillah that's daven, be'emes, has a koyach. So we have to counter it by asking God not, not, not to listen to their prayer. Like the Khanis made the prayer not even enter in front of you. So now the Gemara says that Rabchanina ben Doisa's prayer was so great that it outdid the Koen Gadol's prayer. 
Guys, Rab Chanina Mandoisa, just to know, he's like one of the Balshemtovs of the Gemara, with all of the miracle stories. Rab Chanina Mandoisa lived towards the end of Bayasheni. That means he lived at a time when these prayers were still being articulated by the Kohen Gadol. Rab Chanina Mandoisa, Havak Ozzel Urchi, was taka traveling. And what happened? What happens? Shadom Mitra Alei. Rain descended on him. It made his travel inconvenient, uncomfortable. And he davened. Because most people celebrate the rain. But the Hanina is bizarre. I'm in distress. It's not fair. And you know what? God listened to his prayer and Pasak Mitra. And it stopped raining. The beauty of Rabbi Hanina ben Doisa was he made sure to daven again when he got home. See, there is where he differs from everyone else. Ki Everyone is in Tzad because the rain stopped and only I am Benachas. Ah, no, we need rain. And also Mitra. So really, it just it, it, it re, it retroactively shows that Rabbi Hanina ben Noisa did nothing that harmed the Tzibur. He had that intimacy with God. He had that closeness with God that, you know, so the, the, God just made a rain delay for him. And indeed, Omar Rabbi Yosef Geba Kuk, the Koyach of Rabbi Hanina ben Doisa, that his prayer was more powerful than the Tfil of the Koin Gadol, right when he exited the Holy of Holies. That Mayahan late to Loisa the Koin Gadol, like Rabbi Hanina ben Doisa. It doesn't. Rabbi Hanina ben Doisa trumps the Koin Gadol. Says the Gemara of Aita, Tanda Rabbanu, we learned. Maisev a coin gadol, echad, there was once one coin gadol. Many say that this is Shimon HaTzadik. Guys, we learned about Shimon HaTzadik and Daf Lamed Tess Amid Beis. Shimon HaTzadik, not this detail, that the last year of his life, since the, that, that the one who appeared like an elder entered dressed in black, he knew that he will not live. And indeed, the Gemara says he passed away like a week after Sukkah, is correct? But I and some more details. So that year... When he left the Holy of Holies, he davened a longer amount of time. In the in the in the Now, what he prayed for, we don't know yet. But indeed, the people got nervous because he he lingered more than usual, especially Shemin Atzadik. I mean, this is his 40th year, according to this understanding of the story, according to this tradition of the story, and more than that, Habayas that the Kodesh Kachim being filled with smoke. It took a standard time. And when it was filled with smoke, they would leave. So they knew how to approximate. It should take, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes, and then the coin Gadol will come out. When he lingered in the Beis HaChitzen, he was l- longer than usual. And people like, got afraid. And they took a vote. They're going to do something that normally may not be done. Now we learned that during the Avoid of the Ketoides. But they felt confident enough no, that the Ketoides is finished. No one would linger on in the Holy of Holies. So if he's not doing the Avoida, then they have the right to enter. And they were entering to see what's happening with him. The Nimnu Echavakoyanam to risk it and to enter. Likonis Achrov. And Pumt his Chilu Heim Nichnasin when they began to enter. So that was exactly just as when he was exiting. Vuhu Yoitza. And they right away they vented their fear with him. Amrullah, they tell him, Pnei Maher Achta Betfilascha, why did you prolong your prayer? You got us all scared. Amrullahem to which he responded, Kashabe Nechem Shizpalati Alechem. Does it bother you that I daven for you? Who do you think I was davening for? You should be thanking me. Is it bothering you that I was davening Al Beis Amigdash Shaloyli Kharev? Which is quite amazing, because even though really, Shimon, if this was with Shimon HaTzadik, he was in the beginning of Bayes Rishon, even if this was his 40th year, that means that Beis HaMikdash still stood for another 380 years, but for sure, as we learned above in Lamates, that there was a diminution of the Shekhinah. And the moment there's a diminution with the Divine Presence, the Gilo Yashkina is lessened, that makes the Beis HaMikdash more vulnerable for destruction. And we needed his tvila indeed for it to last, for the, at least the time that it lasted. Amrulay, and they were not happy with that. They told him, please don't do this again. Well, he never did it again because he probably just told them, I'm not going to be here again. And they quoted the Mishnah. Guys, they quoted the Mishnah, Shimon HaTzadik. Shimon HaTzadik, we just said, was in the beginning of Bayez Sheni. When was the Mishnah written? Just cleared the oral title we had forever. We learned the Mishnayis, and many Mishnayis were very similar. So, and they quoted the Mishnah, that And indeed, just to know the source of the, um, of, the, of the string or of the rope that was tied on the leg of the coin Gadol is written in the Zohar. And the Zohar writes that they, that's a Tana, Rab Shimon, that they would tie on the leg of the coin Gadol a golden rope. 
Now, they wouldn't pull him out by the golden rope without prior going into the Hegel. Because the story that we learned before, that the guy got a knock, it wasn't the Ulam, it wasn't the Hegel. But if he were to pass away in the Kodesh Kachim, so they would enter the Ulam, they would enter the Hegel, they would not find the Kohen Gadol and he's not coming out. At that point, instead of needing to enter to take him out, they would drag him out, uh, sadly, by this golden rope. Let's move on weiter. So again, I just pointed, by the intro we pointed out, uh, to be more aware of the challenge when we had in the, at the end of Nun Beis Amad Beis that the Mishnah spoke about him putting down the Machta Bein HaBadim and the Gemara says Miman Shach two curtains or Badim it's one of the two and the Gemara said the Mishnah Daf Nun Beis Amad Beis is already Bisman by Yesheni it's a big Kiddush to say that because when you just read the Mishnayis the last Mishnah spoke about putting down the Machta Bein HaBadim and now it appears that this Mishnah is making a contrast by saying Mishenit Al Oroin from when the Aron was taken, and if we'll have time, we'll already point out that's not from when the Aron was hidden. Nital means, Nital is Taka following those opinions that we learned together in Shkolim, that the Aron HaKodesh was taken by Nebuchadnezzar into Golos, into Babel. Mishinital Aron. So now, where did we put the Machaton? So since Evan Hoysasham, there was this rock in the Holy of Holies. From the days of the Nevi'im Rishonim, from the days of the earlier prophets. Now really, my friends, the rock was there from the creation of the world. And we're going to learn on next daf that some have the opinion that the world, Begashmis, began from that rock. So the meaning of the Mishnah's words that it was Mi'emois, Nevi'im Rishonim, it means that it was the earlier prophets, which is Shmuel and David HaMelech. They were the ones that were Megale, they revealed the importance and the significance of this rock. And I don't know if the rock looked as beautiful and as symmetric as it looked in the picture. But there was a rock in the Holy of Holies. And we called it the foundation rock, as we'll learn in the next stuff. And another detail, it protruded above the ground three finger breaths. The rule is a finger breath is the width of the thumb. And so now, coming back, so if you don't have the Aram Kodesh, and really we already didn't have it in last Mishnah, so it's the Shver. But says the Mishnah, when you don't have it, you would place the shovel on the rock. In other words, you have to approximate where the Adam used to be. And therefore, the Badim, the Badim went both to the west and to the east. But don't forget that the, the Koyan Gadol only stood to the east of the Adam Kodesh. She was facing the west. So it was in between the poles that were protruding out towards the east. And that is where you put down the shovel. Nekuda. And in the middle of the Mishnah, now we're going on. Now we're going back to what we learned in the prior Mishnah. The Kohen Gadol already left. He walked out backwards. We already spoke of the Tefillah Ketzara. And now what? What now? Now guys like this, the, sh the shovel, he left in the Holy of Holies. The ladle, he left in the Holy of Holies. He's going to come and retrieve it later. Now he's coming out to get the blood of the bull to do the avoider with the dam hapar, and it was done in the Holy of Holies initially. Another thing, the two goats are still living, even though it's already after the goidel, and the two goats are still standing towards the easternmost part of the Azara. Right? El the Soy Lazozel was turned around 180 to face the exit. And according to, according at least to some or to all opinions, each one had a red stream wrapped around a different part. They should never get mixed, not with them and not with the soil of Musaf. Now, we're not shechting the soil yet. Now, not El Esadam. The coin Godel would get the dam of the bull from whom, Mimi Shahoyim Mamaras Bai Bai, from the coin that was being Mamarasit on the Roy Verevi. And Nichnas Lamakim Shenichnas. Now, he would enter the place that he had already entered. And he would stand in the place that he already stood. In other words, all of the physical details were the same. That the, the whole machloik is, did he walk on the northern wall? Did he walk on the southern wall? The way he entered, he entered the same way. He stood exactly in the same spot. And for sure, it also has the inner meaning. That lest you think that the loftiest moment of the day was when he offered the ketoiris. And as we learned, that it was then in the cloud that there would, you know, Rabbi Shmuel, uh, Barcheni. When he entered with the Dam Hapar, he reached the same spiritual place. He, he came back to the same spot. And what, what was the physical avoider? He needed to sprinkle from the Dam Hapar 
towards the ark covering. And that will be very important. We're going to have this more in, in Daf Nun Hay. Towards means that even though when you read the Chumash, you would think that he sprinkles the blood on the ark covering because the Torah says Al Hakapoidus. It was not on the ark covering, it was towards the ark covering. However, there was a total of eight sprinklings, and they are divided into two categories. One was Lamaila. And we're going to review this. We're going to learn it again, but we already had it above. It means that the finger, the right index finger that he put into the Mizrak, he would sprinkle the blood by having his palm facing up. So when you throw the blood when your arm is facing, when your palm is facing up, that's called an upward sprinkle. And the blood would actually, it would make like an arch, and it would actually for a moment be higher than the height of the kapoitis. It wouldn't land on the kapoitis, but it would go above the kapoitis. That's called achas lamaila. And then the following seven sprinklings would be when his palm is facing down. Meaning the way Chazal, the way we explain this Mishnah, that he never aimed not for the upper edge of the covering, that's Lamailam. Veloy Lamata, he didn't aim to get the lower edge of the covering. In other words, he was not aiming for the covering at all. All of them fell on the floor, but it was Kematzlif. We already had that above. We're going to learn it again. Kematzlif means that he did make an effort, that it's a total of eight, that they should not fall in the same place. That the first one should fall the closest to the Aram Kaidish, the farthest from him. And then every subsequent of the new seven that his palm is facing Lamata, each one, the blood should fall on the ground closer to him. Now we learned, we're going to learn it again. Kamatzlev means like someone who gives Malkus. When we gave Malkus, there was no God forbid Rishas involved. A Russia would make sure that the whip hits the same part of the back because then it's going to hurt the person more. When you're half human, you make sure that every time the whip hits another place, not to hurt the guy who's getting whipped. With all of the pratim, again, we'll speak it out when we learn the Gemara inside. So that's the pshat. It means he wasn't aiming to get to any part of the ark covering. Not to the higher part. He's standing, of course. All of the avoid has to be done standing. If he does it sitting, he's, he was standing in the same place where he stood when he did the katoidus, which is Ben Habadim, or towards the eastern part of the rock. Oh yes, in the Kodesh Kachim. Towards the Arana Kodesh. No, it's, no, it's, as we'll see, he entered for the katoidus. This is a second entry with the dam. And not only did he sprinkle it, but the kachoyamayna, he needed to count. Achas. Now, the achas is the one that's called lamaila when the palm is facing up. The one that the blood taka, made an arch and it flew in the ear above the ear space of the Aram Kodesh. And he needed to say achas. And then for the next seven, he would count seven. But he wouldn't count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He would connect the achas, lamaila, to all of the seven lamata. So achas, that's lamaila. Let's go soiviv kolalnin. Then our goal is to bring the oida soiviv into mamali. Oida is the toyo bekelem the tikkun. So he connected it. So he didn't say achas. He said achas va achas. In other words, I'm taking from the koyach of the blood lamaila and I'm bringing it down to the achas lamata. And through all of the seven spheres. All of the seven midos. So achas ve achas, achas ve which he's connecting each one to the achas of Lamaila. Achas ve sholish, achas ve arba, achas ve chameish. Guys, we can appreciate the davening better. Achas ve sheis and achas ve sheva. And then in the shul, who says what before whom? Does the Baltvila say the achas ve achas? Does everyone repeat it? And then we have the, uh, the beautiful Yom Kippur tension, other azoi, other azoi, weiter. Okay, now Yotza, let's finish the Mishnah. Now, okay, now we finished. And here he's not here he's walking out with the Mizrak. He doesn't leave the Mizrak. But he doesn't take the bowl outside. Because the next time he's gonna sprinkle the dam of the par will be while he's in the Heichal. So he has to put it down. Now, before he had the luxury to give it to a coin who's holding it and steering it. Here, no coin is allowed to be in the oil moyet. So here is where they prepared a stand, or two stands, right now one stand for this blood, and here he would place the dam in the stand, and by the way, right now the clock is ticking, because the moment he put the Mizrak that has a pointy bottom, so he needed the stand, but he put it in the Khan, in the Khan Hazov, now he knows that he has only X amount of time before the blood gets congealed. 
and there's plenty for him to do, and now he's moving. He puts it down on the golden stand. And now he has to eshech the soir. Now to save time, and also chush or the coin gadol, now is where they took the he goat that was standing in the easternmost part of the Azorah. Now they bring it, bein ulam la mizbeach, to the same place where he shechted the dam ha the par. Hevi yoloyes asoy, that's the soy l'ashem. And he shechted it with all the details, bein ulam la mizbeach. And he again was the same one that was the kibble b'mizrek as dami. And now he went in to the third time, Nichnas l'makem she nichnas v'om v'makem she omat. V'yiz v'menu again achas l'may lo v'shev l'mato. V'kach ho yomayna achas achas v'achas achas v'shtayim v'chulei. And now yotze v'hini choy al kan hazov hasheni shebeheichol. Now there was a second golden stand according to the Tanakhama in which he put the Mizrak of the Dam HaSoyer. And that allowed him to only use his right hand because he's using his right hand, he put it down. Then with his right hand, he would pick up again the Mizrak of the Pud. However, Rabbi Yehuda says that Lo Yehoi Yosham Elo Kan Echad Bulvad. There was only one stand. Which means he has to use his left hand as well. And what happened was, no matter which way, not Al Dam HaPud V'Niach Dam HaSod. And now he has, he already went in the, three times. And we're going to stop over here to be continued. Now he has to use the Dam Hapar and the Dam Asoy, where many more avoiders with these bloods to be continued.